In this example, we are going to do a related rates problem um, that is going to involve a triangle. Um, so let's read through it and let's see what we have and what we're looking for and all those things. So it says an observer stands 200 meters from the launch site of a hot air balloon. So there's the person, balloon's going up, and an elevation equal to the elevation of the launch site. Um, says that the balloon rises vertically at a constant rate, right? So this is moving up. Might as well label that. So this is our x value, our y value, and our z value. Um, and then our rate at which this is changing is four meters per second. Okay. How fast is the angle of elevation? So how fast is the angle of elevation of the balloon increasing 30 seconds after launch? So actually, we're going to be looking for the rate at which the angle is changing. So somewhere we're going to have to do a derivative that's going to give us a d theta dt. So it's not going to be a Pythagorean theorem, which is very common with the triangle. We're going to have to figure out a trig function, either sine, cosine, or tangent, kind of depends on the situation we have. Um, and we're going to have to do some sort of a derivative with have a theta in there, so that way we can get a d theta dt. So um, let's see what we got. Let's organize our thoughts here. So we are given that we have uh, the horizontal distance, so our x is going to be equal to 200 meters. Uh, we have a um, not a vertical height, but a rate at which the uh, height is changing, which is 4 meters per second. And it's going to be positive because it's increasing. Um, and what we are looking to do is find the rate, so d theta dt, when we are 30 seconds in. All right, well, we, um, let's kind of see what we have. So these are the two equations, or these are the two pieces, right? Like this X is 200. These are the two pieces that we have a little bit of information about. We don't know anything about Z, so let's not use it which means if you're talking about what trig function is gonna relate these two sides together, we have ourselves a tangent. So tangent of theta is gonna be y over x. And we are going to need to do the derivative with respect to time. That's the only way we can pull in d theta dt. So doing the derivative of tangent with respect to our derivative of tangent with respect to time, um, we're going to do derivative of tangent, which if you remember, it is pst, spell, pst, but we're going to cancel out the P. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So this is going to be secant squared theta. But remember that tangent is always a chain rule. And we are doing the derivative of this with respect to time. So we're doing the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared. So that's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, which is d theta dt. And then that equals this over on this side. This is going to be a quotient rule. So we're looking to do the derivative of y with respect to time. So that's going to be so the derivative of the top times the bottom. So the derivative of the top dy dt times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom with respect to time divided by the bottom squared. All right, so that's what we have. This is our derivative. We need to figure out all the pieces because the only thing that we shouldn't know is this one right here. So we should be able to figure out what our theta is. We should be able to figure out what our how our rates are changing we should be able to figure out all these pieces, right? That's the goal. So what do we know so far? We know our X value is 200. Our Y value, that's where this comes in. 
We don't know the height because it's constantly changing, but we're going to figure out the height at 30 seconds, right? So let's draw a little picture here. So we know that that's 200. We have a specific height at 30 seconds. That's where this comes in. We are increasing at a rate of, the Y values are increasing at a rate of four meters per second. So four meters per second would mean there's 30 seconds into this. So then that's gonna give us a height of 120. So Y value is gonna equal 120. Okay, so we have the Y value, we have the X value, that X value. Uh, we need the rate at which the X's are changing. Well, you're standing at a horizontal distance that's not moving. So your rate at which the X's are changing is nothing. Okay, so that'll be zero. The rate at which the Y's are changing, we already have it, four meters per second. So we have every one of those pieces. Uh, we don't know this one, that's what we're shooting for, but we should be able to figure out theta to plug into here so we can get that value. That is gonna be also based on this picture right here. So we're gonna to try to figure out what theta is. So that is a tangent situation. So inverse, or so the tangent of theta is gonna be 120 over 200. And so theta is gonna equal the inverse tangent of that fraction. I don't know. We'll plug that into the calculator. So throw this in the calculator. Uh, let's make sure my mode is in radians. And we're going to do inverse tan of 120 divided by 200. All right, so we're going to take that value. So that's our theta. So 0 0.540. Let's not round. Let's use that value when we plug it in over to here. All right, so um, we have everything we need. Let's plug it all in, figure out how to get d theta dt by itself. So just as I go through this, let me try to help my own cause that secant is really cosine. So I'm looking at this being one over cosine of this value, 0 0.540, da, da, da. And that whole thing is squared because it's secant squared. So it'll be cosine squared. So I'm going to write it like this so I know how to be plugging this into the calculator. And then d theta dt. Right, and then that's gonna equal our change in our y, so four. Our x value is it's locked at a 200, minus our y value at that 30 second mark was 120. Our rate at which um, our x is changing is nothing, divided by our x that we're squaring. All right, so this thing, we're going to multiply that over, but let's clean this up just a little bit. That's going to go away, and you're going to have um, 200, 4 times 200, divided by two of these, oops, right, because it's 200 squared, so we can cancel off one of them. And I have a 1 over this cosine 0 0.5. Four zero dot dot dot. That piece is squared, and then times d theta dt. Uh, I can make this a one. I can make this a fifty. Nope. Yep. Yes. Or close it to twenty five times. So that makes that a fifty. So we are looking at one over cosine zero point five four zero squared um, times d theta dt d theta dt equaling 1 over 50. All right, so I'm going to multiply this piece over, combine it with that, and that's going to give us our rate at which our angle is changing. So we're going to multiply by cosine of 0 0.540 squared to clear it out. Multiply this by cosine 0 
zero squared. All right, so let's throw that in the calculator and let's see what we get. So we're gonna take um, one over 50 times parentheses cosine of that value, but then that has to be squared. All right, so that's giving us our rate at which the, the angle in radians is changing. So 0 0.0147 radians per second. So I don't love that answer if it's in radians. So just out of my own curiosity, um, what is it in degrees? So if I convert it in degrees, if I convert that into degrees, I would be, um, multiplying in 180 and dividing out pi. So that is about 0 0.843 degrees per second. So at that moment, um, we would be increasing that angle about a little bit less than a degree per second but at every moment that is going to change, right? Kind of the further it goes and it kind of slows down your angle of elevation, it would be quicker at the very beginning. And then it kind of starts to slow down just due to the kind of the angles and distances and stuff. So, all right. So that is our answer. Uh, that's our radians per second. It should have been a positive value because it was going up. Um, so that's our value.